Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 280 of the It's Obvious podcast. My name is Garrett Drake. I'm joined by Jacob Alka. It's been too long, as always, but we're glad to be back talking about all the great games we've been playing, all the great games that have come this year, many more just ahead of us as of the day we're recording this podcast. It is a Wednesday evening, approximately 8.14 p.m. as we get rolling in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, I'm happy to be here with you, Jacob. How you been? Garrett, I'm doing great. How are you doing, my buddy? I'm doing well. Just, uh, I'm, I hate to say it, it's just nothing really interesting to say apart from uh, just working, you hey, know? Dude, that's, that's been my life. <laughs> just existing for the most part. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's been a long week already and it's only Wednesday. So. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, I'm going to get up tomorrow and do it all again. You know, it's the life. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of ironic. We live closer than ever than we ever have in our lives, actually, mm-hmm. and we still hardly ever see each other. I know. I mean, we see I each other. I kind of put that on you, though, Jacob, because I've I've told you on more than one occasion. I can see you any night of the week if you want. Yeah. You just got to let me know. Why are you putting me on the spot like this? I'm just saying, man. I feel like I'd mentioned that a couple of times, and I haven't heard from you. Well, I, you know, things happen. You know. <laughs> things happen i gotta i gotta go to work i gotta go to the grocery store i gotta get gas yeah, that's you know life right? stuff like sometimes totally. things happen yeah i mean what are you doing this weekend well, um what am i doing i'm i'm pretty busy this weekend oh oh work. oh you don't have time now <laughs> but i can I'm, I'm i can do any night this week um i work during the week so i gotta get up early yeah okay well one of these days i guess one of these days we'll make the time at least we're here together on the internet this evening. True, true. I feel like we haven't done this in a very long time. Yeah, I mean, if, if we've just both been working, talk to me about what games you've been playing. Uh, what games have I been playing? So, uh, I've been playing a little game called Resident Evil 4 Remake. and I'm really uh, happy to hear that. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm playing it a little late compared to everybody else. I mean, it came out a couple weeks ago, I believe, and just bought it like maybe last weekend so maybe put in i don't know maybe two three to four hours maybe i'm i mean i I guess i could kind of spoil what's going on in the game because it's yeah what's the last thing you did in the game before recording this podcast so i i got the boat and i like fought the thing that like in the lake when you get the boat okay Mm -hmm. and i killed him or i speared him I'm not sure if he's dead or not. I assume he is. And uh, I've just been going around exploring, finding treasures around the lake. And I found the two little, uh, I don't know what kind of heads they are, but there's little heads that go on these stone pillars or the hands, I think. And Mm -hmm. I put those in and then I unlock something. So that's where I am. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. You're off to the races, man. You're doing it. So the game starts out very slow and I didn't know if I was going to like it at first. Cause I don't know, like it, like I've never played RE4, so I didn't know like how the gameplay sort of feels. And I know it's kind of different now on the remake, but it just felt so. You stiff. thought the village part was slow? Yeah, like like after the village, it just felt like very. I, I don't know. It just felt like stiff. I didn't. I wasn't crazy about the gunplay, and most of it was because I was using a controller and I couldn't aim. Yeah. To save uh-huh. my life, but I eventually got used to it again, and you know it started to grow on me a little bit. And now I'm at the point where I'm enjoying it a lot. Because, you know, I've, I've gotten used to the controls. I've gotten used to, like, you know, I've gotten a lot more weapons now. So I'm not just running around with, you know, like a single grenade and a, pres- and a pistol. You know, I have quite a few selections and I've got some attachments, too. So everything's starting to kind of flow. I'm getting into the rhythm. And uh, I got to say, the game's not really scary at all. It's just very action packed and, you know, it's fun. But nothing's really, like, terrified me yet. So I'm hoping for sure something's sort of going to do that but we'll see (laughs) we'll see there really is only one there's a couple spooky moments throughout the game but there's one true like pretty terrifying sequence toward the end that the game's really well known for historically (laughs) and uh (laughs) it's fun is it is it the same in this game as it is in the original yeah i'd say it's even scarier just because the the fidelity of the game is uh makes it even more intense but okay okay i'm excited um it's a uh i want to hear more from you just your general thoughts but just my quick thoughts or i have beaten it um i started my new game plus playthrough at least my first new game plus playthrough games meant to be intended to be played multiple times but 
Um, I think it's an absolute masterpiece. I've loved, I love every single thing about it. Um, I, I like, love the original too, but I'd only played it once before on PS4 actually of all places, um, about a year or two ago before the remake came out. So it was pretty fresh in my mind. Um, and I've seen comparison videos of the things that are the same, things that are evolved, things that are either cut or changed entirely. And it's kind of the beauty of this remake in particular. And most of the Resident Evil remakes, with the exception of three, is that it's really not only just a great remake, but it's very complimentary of the original in many ways. So you, you could still go back and play the original and enjoy it for different reasons, which is cool. But I hear what you're saying about the gunplay, because it took me probably a couple of hours to get used to it on controller as well. And because uh, I played the demo on PS5 and PC, mm-hmm. and I actually played all of RE2 Remake on PC, and the aiming is just so easy and amazing on PC because you can just be deadly accurate without any effort. Yeah. But on PlayStation, you feel like it's always kind of working against you. Yeah, I feel like it's so but, floaty, and I can never, you know, time it right. It's weird. Mm-hmm. I'm at a point now where I've played the game so much that it's like second nature to me. And I, you, I, I, I'm assuming it'll be the same for you. You'll play enough to where you just get so used to the way the game feels that you'll just become a master at it and feel pretty yeah. powerful. Um, but yeah, it's very much known for being action packed and, uh, you're, you're intended to use your ammo and not conserve as much. I mean, you can really go crazy on a lot of these enemies and yeah. taking advantage, of course, your roundhouse kick, your suplex, your knife <laughs> parries now, which is pretty sick. Um, Leon Kennedy is just one of the best video game characters of all time. And, uh, his evolution from two to this game is incredible. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I really did love everything about it. I think it's an absolute masterpiece. And I was actually, I, I love it so much that, uh, one of the things I did was unlock the hand cannon and, uh, in the infinite ammo upgrade you can get for it. So on really? my second playthrough, I'm going through with an infinite ammo hand cannon, just obliterating everything, <laughs> which is great. When do so, you get the hand cannon? Uh, you unlock it, I think from, I can't, it's, uh, my brain's fried because I just spent like six days in a row killing myself to review Jedi Survivor. <laughs> so my brain's so fried, but I think, uh, you get it after you beat the game, you unlock it and new game plus you unlock it and you can buy it. I think that's what it is, okay. but there, there's fun because there's challenges throughout the game that you have to complete to unlock other weapons and other little trinkets here and there. And I love that you can really make the game your own, too, with the charms you can put on your case and the way you organize your case, um, the different weapons and their different pros and cons. And uh, an essential upgrade, if you haven't bought it yet, is the laser sight for your pistol. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's also, I'd say, I recommend finding, uh, cause I, at least I've, I had handgun always as like my main for a lot of situations because you find the most ammo for it. Yeah. And it's the easiest to craft ammo for. But I think my personal favorite handgun aside from the hand cannon, of course, is uh, the Punisher. Yeah. If, uh, cause that one has a uh, minimal recoil and, um, once you upgrade it all the way, that thing's pretty deadly. Yeah. I think I've I, heard other, is that the one that comes from like doing the quests that, that currency? I think it is. Uh, I remember seeing it. On maybe the video. I can't remember. I bought the deluxe edition and it came with it automatically. I think oh, okay. it was already in my case when I bought the game. Yeah. I think it costs like, five to ten of those little pink currency things whatever okay they are. yeah yeah that's that's a worth it for that pistol i think the pistol's great yeah i, I, I yeah, just so many fun basic weapons. pistol man and it's i've upgraded it a lot so it's yeah. it's packing quite a punch now and also i love the submachine gun obviously for just mowing through guys but mm. i've Do recently just think, yet? uh yeah yeah i got the i got a rifle nice. i got a scope on it if i want it uh I have a shotgun. Obviously, you get it very early on, but I I rarely use it. I, I keep it in my storage, mainly. Um, but yeah, I'd, I love to just stealth through towns too. That's a lot of fun. I, I like trying to like challenge myself to see how many people I can kill stealthed before they notice me. <laughs> Usually, mm-hmm. it doesn't last very long, but you know, it's it's a fun little challenge that I try to do a lot. Um, yeah, I have so much fun with the combat. I love just going into an arena and just going to town, especially when you finish the game and you have all your upgrades you have full health and like all the stuff at your disposal plenty of ammo and all the, all your favorite weapons by the end because you just keep unlocking more and more weapons as you go which is fun mm-hmm. and uh really taking advantage of the the economy in the game and those risk reward situations and determining what you want to take into each situation is fun mm-hmm. um so many things to love about it it's just such a phenomenal game. I, I love it so much that what I was trying to say earlier is that I, I was sad to step away from it to review Jedi as much as I really like Jedi, which I'll talk about later. Um, I was sad to, to walk away from it because I was having so much fun playing it. So I'm glad yeah. to hear you're playing it, Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if I was going to play it at first because uh, I was trying to 
grind through Harry Potter, which I also did play. I forgot about that. And I, I, I beat it too, which is. Oh, cool. nice. I haven't beaten that yet. Yeah. Um, which is big news because the last time we did this podcast, I was praising it. Yeah. Yeah. We were all, <laughs> we were all on Harry Potter's dick. That's to say it lightly. Like we love I mean, that game. We not ever being honest. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're pretty, pretty big Potter nerds, but uh, yeah. Let's uh, hold on to that subject for a second. Okay. We can, we can segue off there pretty well. Yeah. T- talk to me about you've beaten Hogwarts. Talk to me about your overall thoughts. Just on Hogwarts. Yeah. Um, overall narratively, it's pretty poor. It's it's nothing mm-hmm. special in terms of the story it's telling. Um, personally, I've never been a big fan of the goblins in Harry Potter. I don't think they're that interesting. I mean, some of them can be like, for example, Dobby. Um, a lot of the house elves, when they do introduce them, do have personality. But a lot of the times when they like use goblins from the bank, I never think that's that interesting or <laughs> just like an evil goblin like that is in this game. I don't think he's that cool. I'm going to be completely honest. I would have rather seen. Someone that was a little more, you know, into the dark arts, not necessarily tied to like ancient magic or whatever they use in this game. So that was a little bit of a letdown. But personally, I still think the fact that you got to make your own character, get into a house in Hogwarts and then basically be be a student for, you know, several seasons throughout the game, almost as if you actually go to school there. It was it's a lot I mean, honestly, I had pretty high expectations and it mostly met them, except for sort of the sort of the narrative, I guess, is what I want to say. The gameplay was really good overall. And um, again, I, I just think Hogwarts itself and the areas around Hogwarts were pretty good in terms of, you know, just a nice open world. And then the, the castle itself and, and Hogsmeade were both really, really good. And I think those were probably the best areas of the game by a long shot. Not to say that the open world areas were bad by any means. They're just kind of overshadowed by how good Hogwarts is because it's Hogwarts, you know. But yeah, I really enjoyed the game. It was it was pretty good. But I mean, I don't know if I want to necessarily want a sequel. I'm sure we might get one or another game like that in some way. Um, And I did see that there's going to be a Quidditch game coming out. Sometime, so. They're doing a play test for it, right? Or did it already happen? I can't remember. Uh, I know they did a play test and they're going to do more. Um, I stopped playing Hogwarts because I kind of got burnt down on it. Yeah. Um, Which is surprising because I really did love every second I spent with it up until probably the last 10 hours or so. I think it's because I got in a loop where I was still occasionally coming across cool surprises, but all the surprises, I guess, had kind of run their course at the point because I just exhausted so much of the side content. Me too. (laughs) <laughs> that I was like behind on the main story. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was kind of like not even in the mood to continue the main story. Here's the thing, Gary. You then, have to do those because you are under leveled if you don't going into the last missions like I was. Right. Uh-huh. And the boss fights are like even more challenging if you're not high enough level. Yeah. And there was no aspect of the game I was really bored of. I just, I, the loop I'd kind of grown tired of as a whole. Um, yeah. That's really not a knock against it. Like, I, I still think the combat's really cool that we can mix and match your spells. I'm having, actually having to recall a lot because. I've played other like exhausted other games since the last time I played Hogwarts. I have to like recall what it's like to play, but um, yeah, I uh, didn't, don't really dislike anything about it. I'll eventually go back and beat it. Of course, probably honestly for the time being, not anytime soon because between now and the next couple of months, we have so many incredible games coming out that I can't even imagine myself getting back to Hogwarts anytime soon. Yeah. But I will at some point, uh, yeah, you mentioned the the Quidditch game. I think it's called Quidditch Hog. It's called Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, I think, or something. And uh, which really was a surprise uh, so soon after the release of Hogwarts Legacy. Um, you know, there's speculation is 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 this game's existence the main reason why uh, it isn't or Quidditch isn't in Hogwarts Legacy? That could be part of it. Yeah. Um, Maybe it wasn't ready. Cause, yeah, whatever this game is, although it's a drastically different art style from Hogwarts Legacy, I can imagine whatever it is plugging into Hogwarts Legacy if it if it had actually existed in the game in the first place. But I'm excited to see what it's all about because I know we've talked about Quidditch ad nauseum on this podcast over the years and especially within the last six months or so with Hogwarts. Um, so... We'll see. I'm I'm interested to see if our ideas have come to life that we've talked about in this game, or if it's something we never imagined. Yeah. My biggest hope is that it one works and that it's 
of course, accessible and fun to play, but there's like a decent skill gap so that you feel really rewarded for playing well. And the way that I, I joined the Discord and signed up for the playtest, I may or may not get into a future playtest, but there's sections for like chaser, beater, seeker. Um, uh, I think that's all the that, keeper. So I don't know if that's intended for, cause I haven't actually gone back into those threads in a while, but I don't know if the game's broken up into positions for each player. Like we've thought could, could potentially be a possibility or if it's just one-on-one -on -one situations where you're controlling the entirety of the team, kind of like Quidditch world cup back in the day. Yeah. But great potential for it. I'm assuming it'll be free to play. Yeah, just, you would think a multiplayer then, game like that assumes me it would be the only thing I, I know you create a character as well, but it's called Harry Potter. Maybe just the keyword is going to help it sell better. But yeah. Harry Potter Quidditch champions. So I, I bet you would say just more. an online game where you just queue in for an, a match and then, you know, each position is filled by a, a person, you know, in the real world and you just control one position. That's what yeah. I would envision for it. If I had to guess, I don't think it would be like FIFA where you're like controlling a whole team. Mm -hmm. That would seem less you know I mean? fun to me, I think. I also want online re leaderboards like I've talked about in the past where depending on which house you're a part of. I don't know if it's a, the kind of game where you can just play as any house anytime or if you have to like commit to one in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see online leaderboard to see which house globally is performing the best. And yeah, the Quidditch cool. game sounds cool to me. Like as many sports sim aspects they can throw in there that you'd see on like your Madden or your FIFA or like a racing game could be kind of cool. Just having stats like that, like how many if you're a keeper, like how many quaffles you've blocked, how many snitches you've caught, how yeah. many players you've knocked off their broom. If you're a beater, like stats like that could keep It'd be it cool really if it was like Apex where it kind of has like the ribbons next to you, like the load in screen where like has like stats that you choose to list. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you That's one of my that. favorite aspects of Apex. That's something I've wanted to see in Halo Infinite for a while is because mm -hmm. all the medals you get in the game are always cool and it'd be great to have a ribbon that comes up or, or your banner that says 600 double kills, uh, 400 no scopes and like stuff like that just makes you look cool. Yeah. Um, I've wanted to see that come to, to Halo, but yeah, anything like that is always a plus. When was the last time you played Halo? Uh, not that long ago, actually. Probably a few weeks. It was before Resident Evil came out. Okay. How is it doing right now? <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's it's still not the best thing ever, but that studio's undergone absolute hell. Microsoft, yeah. which we'll talk about, is like... <laughs> Microsoft's in kind of in trouble, I think, dude. You think? Like, that, that, the whole state of the gaming division of Microsoft, Xbox, I should say, is in a really bizarre place right now. Mm -hmm. They're kind of in a hole that I can't imagine them digging themselves out of. Really? I mean, Microsoft could rebrand Xbox entirely and start from the ground up because they're that wealthy. But I don't know what it'll be. But uh, what was the other Harry Potter thing? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the TV show before we move on. Okay. So HBO now soon to be called just Max, which is hilarious to me, um, is uh, going to produce a Harry Potter TV show based on the books. Each book is going to get its own season. Brand new cast. J.K. Rowling is contributing to the pro the producer side to help um guide it which i think is great news and uh, when i heard this news this is something i imagined that we would see in our lifetimes honestly if not within like the next few years like this is seemingly going to be at least within the next 10 i imagine we'd see a reboot of harry potter and it's something i'm actually incredibly open to because I'm, I'm just like passionate about the the franchise in general i love the books I'll always love the movies. Of course, I love the original cast, but I really do strongly believe in the potential of a series um, based on the books. Mm -hmm. And originally, I'd imagine I, there was a rumor for a while that they do an original cast of characters with an original story just taking place at Hogwarts, which I would also love to see, um, maybe even more so than seeing the books brought to life again. Yeah. But... That being said, I love the book so much and them having theoretically eight to ten episodes to breathe is probably going to make the original movies feel like speed runs <laughs> after yeah. the series comes out, <laughs> which doesn't ruin the movies for me. I love the movies, but um, I'm I'm really excited to see where this goes. I just I assume with J.K. Rowling involved, it's going to do well. Um, they'll probably make some choices that will surprise us, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited to see who they cast. Um, my, my biggest hopes for it are... And I, I'm only the only thing I'm concerned about so far is that when they officially revealed this, they used John Williams' score 
and the original Harry Potter logo from the movie. Yeah. Which kind of bugged me a little bit because I feel like that's relying too heavily on what's come before. I think the logo is fine. That's the same logo that's on like the American books at least. But mm -hmm. um, I hope that the music's original. I hope that the castle is redesigned. And I think a fun idea I was talking to someone else about um, for the uniforms, like redesign everything to be original, but still be true to the source material. Because on all the, at least on the original American covers of the books, all you'd see all the students wearing their robes over their normal street clothes. So it'd be like, imagine Harry in like a t-shirt and jeans and Converse, but his robe was over top of that. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to like take inspiration from that original artwork and apply that to the new show. Mm -hmm. Like as much as I love the uniforms in the movies where they have like the ties and vests and slacks and everything, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be cool if they like took inspiration from that artwork and all the students have their normal street clothes with just their simple robe over that. Sounds kind of cool to me. Yeah. Um, and if they, if this show miraculously, if they cast actors who don't go crazy or like fall off a cliff or <laughs> it's so, I feel like casting people for like a, the longevity is like kind of like, especially risky these days, it's tough. especially with the existence of social, social media. Mm -hmm. It'd be a shame if they get to season four, like gobble to gobble to fire season. And all of a sudden, like they have to recast Harry cause he like yeah. is a racist or like, <laughs> or gets hit by a car or something, you know? So a racist God or forbid. gets hit by a car. What are <laughs> yeah, the two? It just, just anything could go wrong with something that they planned this far ahead. So hopefully it plays out and uh, they can cast amazing actors that stick with it for the the 10 year plan they have. Cause uh, I'm really excited to see the potential of it come to life. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I don't know if I really have anything to add. I'm, I'm equally also really excited. Um, not really worried or anything. I, I think they'll do it. Hopefully they'll do a good job of casting. Um, I don't. I wouldn't really care if like they changed the race of somebody or did anything like that. I don't think it, that's that important to me. Um, just being sort of faithful to the books and just the retelling of the story is all I really care about. So. Totally, I'm, I feel the exact same way. So there's a lot of cool stuff they could do creatively oh, and on every yeah, yeah. front. <laughs> For sure, there's a lot of things they could do in the books or from the books that weren't in the movies. So. It can mm -hmm. almost be like you're experiencing something else on the screen for the first time. Yeah. yeah imagine it's, uh, is there, there are a few, very few shows I ever want to rewatch, but I love the idea of having seven seasons of seven school years oh that you could rewatch. Yeah. It'd be cool. For sure. Because I love just existing in the world of Harry Potter. That's why I really liked a lot of my time spent in Hogwarts. And that's what I love about annually rewatching the movies is just feeling cozied up mm -hmm. going to Hogwarts for like seven movies. Or eight movies, technically. For sure. So, I'm excited to see where it goes. Mm -hmm. I know they're doing uh, Twilight as well. Twilight. Yeah, Twilight being rebooted into, into a TV show that I unironically think has amazing potential. <laughs> it should probably be better than the movies. Yeah, because I think the movies are, are goofy fun. But yeah. I feel... And I haven't even read the Twilight books. I just understand uh, the idea behind the books and what fans of the books have talked to me about. And I believe in a series that could really be awesome based on the books and just given time to breathe as well and not be as stupid as the movies are because <laughs> i've always thought vampires are cool and werewolves and stuff um so i'd hope they kind of dive deeper into like i i, I would like if they would reimagine a little bit and instead of having sparkly vampires have more traditional vampires and make that work somehow maybe, maybe the werewolves aren't actual wolves but are actual werewolves could be cool but yeah. It's more like the horror side that I'm most interested in, but I don't know. We'll see. I feel like Not a big Twilight fan, but I like, like seeing are. stuff. I like seeing stuff reimagined. Yeah. I'm a low key fan of Twilight, just the movies. I've never read the books, but yeah, I'm down to watch the movies. They're fun to watch with friends. I would watch it if it was like I wasn't doing anything else and it was just on, you know? Yeah. I'm not yeah, going to go back much and watch them. Robert Pattinson and anything. So. Yeah, I, I cannot wait for the new Batman. I, I want to see him as Batman again, man. He's so good. I love uh, that movie. The latest rumor is that uh, Clayface is going to be the main villain. Interesting choice. It is interesting. He hasn't been in a uh, live action movie so far, as far as I know. At I least the Batman movies right. I'm familiar with. Unless he was in <laughs> so, an older uh, one that I've never seen. No, I don't think so. I don't know how they would do so. it that back then. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it will be interesting to see the 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 route they go with him because the first movie is so grounded and Clayface is very much uh, like more of a 
fantastical type of of enemy yeah. with uh, superpowers essentially. So I don't know, but Clayface's character is really interesting. It's pretty tragic as well, not unlike Mister Freeze. So <laughs> potential there. I think the Penguin Show will be entertaining because Colin Farrell is really good as the character, but I think the mm-hmm. show looks ugly really? <laughs> compared to Greg Frazier, the DP of the Batman. Is, that movie is so beautiful to look at, and obviously they can't get him to do the TV show, and the TV show, just the trailer looked nasty. I'm sure it wasn't like a final color grade or anything. It just it looked like a cheap TV show in comparison to like the magnitude of the film. Mm-hmm. So I'm still going to watch it because I like Colin Farrell, and I want to keep up to date with that character leading up to yeah. the Batman. I love the title too, the Batman part two. That's perfect. So also stoked to see where that goes. I know Matt Reeves, from what I understand is in the process, if not finalizing the script, he has finished it. And I think it was in a production later this year, if I'm not mistaken. So that's probably a 2025 movie. If I had to guess still a good ways out. Yeah. But yeah, man, stoked for that. Where were we again? We're talking about Harry Potter. We're talking um, about things that we're playing, I think. Yeah. What else have you been playing? Um, besides that, playing a little bit of WoW. Um, new season will start, or the new uh, patch in Dragonflight will start next Tuesday. So lots of new content coming out. Going to kill some dragons. Going to do some dungeons. Going to clear the raid on the highest difficulty. Because I'm in a mythic raiding guild now. And what does that mean? I'm going to get the best gear in the game. That's all there is to it. I mean, What's a so, mythic guild? Okay, so there are four difficulties of the raid, Garrett. You got the looking for raid difficulty, which is the only version that you can queue into. Like, imagine you're queuing into a match of Call of Duty. Like, mm-hmm. you click a button and it matches you into a raid group of 40 other, or 39 other, other people, basically. And it's you just raid random with that people. many people? Yeah. Wow. yeah. In that mode, yeah. Um. Then there's the second tier up is normal mode. That's like the baseline raid experience like it's it's not too hard um it drops decent gear and it's for people to sort of start out with when they're jumping into raiding like once you meet people that you want to raid with like you join a new guild you start out in normal because it's you know the way to fuel everybody out so not too hard of a challenge it's you know it's a good testing ground next year up from that is heroic difficulty gear this is where most i would say most people sort of experience the game that are in like guilds and stuff that are you know that would consider themselves raiders they would usually tell you that they do heroic version and heroic's kind of a challenge it's it's what i did for a long time you know with my guild and it's you know you can go through clear it every week you you get pretty decent gear it's not the best gear in the game but it's good enough to do any content in the game um for the most part and then you got mythic difficulty and so Mythic Difficulty, there can only be 20 people and only 20 people. And once you join the group, you're locked to that group's progress. So like, say, you know, you clear four bosses and you come back another night and you, one person can't come for whatever reason. They just can't make it. So you're left with 19. Uh, it's really hard to find a random person to cover that spot because they'll be saved to the bosses that you've already killed and they won't get any loot. So. It's kind of hard to like mythic guildings or mythic ratings kind of like just, you know, it's pretty, it's hardcore. Like you, people got to be committed. They got to show up and it's, it's kind of like every week you're trying to progress and work through the raid because it's really difficult. Like they tune the bosses to be challenging. They add extra mechanics for every difficulty you go up and mythic is the highest tier. So it's going to be the hardest to actually defeat. So it's like personally it's been really fun to just climb the ladder as i've been playing the game for the last couple actually a few years now that i've started to replay it and you know i've joined this new guild over the last year and it's a mythic rating guild so it's just been cool to kind of just experience that because i've never played the game at this tier or this this difficulty basically so i'm getting the best gear in the game and then and that's allowing me to do like more damage and do higher tiers of content. So it's been fun. Nice. Why'd you wait so long to join a mythic guild? Uh, you have to be invited. I mean, yeah, you got to find a guild and mm-hmm. that kind How'd of you stuff. Find them? So I think I've, I'm going to mention, but me and four other buddies quit our old guild because we were just sick of 
people not playing the game with us. Like no one would ever log on it besides her raid. So like we were just we would be on one night and no one would be on at all besides us four. It would just be us playing, doing dungeons all the time. Everyone else would just be you know doing whatever, which you know more power to them. But we wanted to like we we wanted to find other people that were enjoying the game as much as we were. So, and then we wanted to try out mythic rating just because we felt like we were good enough to do it, and we just wanted to try it. And we just happened nice. to find a good group of people that are also pretty good at the game. So that's cool. It's been fun. Yeah, you, you commenting about the people who weren't wanting to log on reminds me of that meme that's been floating around and that the guy and we're like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, me? Just hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of reminds me Ooh, of me. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> man, well, congrats on your uh, mythic questing, man. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's it's a uh, raiding, Garrett. Mythic raiding. Excuse me. <laughs> mythic, are you uh, kidding me? I think Mythic Quest is the name of another, like, probably a mobile game or something. Yeah, it's something like that. You can that. play a lot of Mythic Quest on mobile. <laughs> um, but besides that, I've been watching a lot of anime, too, and TV. One TV show that I'll mention. Um, I, I caught up on One Piece, Garrett. I'm all the way caught up. That's can crazy, you bro. How do yeah. you have... Do you just watch it, like, whenever you're eating, I'm assuming, That's right? what I did. That's, that's yeah. when you like to watch it? Yeah. I, that's amazing multitasking, dude. I can never watch anime and eat at the same time. It's How? impossible that's for me. It's so easy. Because I just can't... Because I, I don't know. It's, it's just too distracting for me. I gotta be locked in on anime to, like, really... You, gotta, you gotta read the, the subtitles and look down your plate, take a bite, look back up. <laughs> yeah, but that, then... Because that's the thing. It's like, I'm already having to work my eyes a lot to read subtitles and also enjoy the animation simultaneously. Then when you factor in food, you're bouncing all over the place. It's like you're going to the gym or something just to watch anime when you factor in food at that point. Yams is barking at me. <laughs> oh, Yams. Man, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. You're I probably one up. of the few that started so late and caught up. Oh, probably not. It's a very popular That's hundreds show. of episodes, right? That was, it's a, it was over a thousand. Jacob, that is unbelievable, bro. <laughs> I mean, I started it over a year ago. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Holy crap. Yeah, it's I'm caught up on Attack on Titan. Me too. Yeah. But that's that's only like 80 something episodes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and guess 80 what? Very high quality episodes, too. It's very good show. Did you watch like the the opener to this new season? Yeah, it's so like final, final chapter, final season, yeah, uh, prologue, final, final. Epilogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> it's like an hour long, I think. Yeah. 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 I don't Quite know when the, the next one's too. coming out. I don't know what's going on. I think it's coming out in the fall, from what I understand. Dude, they are dragging that show on. Just what are they doing? Well, I, I understand it's like crazy to animate that show, yeah. but goodness gracious, dude, it's taking so long. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've been talking about the final season for three years. Yep. <laughs> so it's um, ridiculous. So a few others. Uh, so the new season of Demon Slayer just came out. I think there's three or four episodes now. If you mm-hmm. didn't know that, you should go back and watch that because I love that. I think that might be my favorite anime. I have so many people saying that to me recently. Have you have you ever watched Demon Slayer? I've seen the first two or three episodes. Yeah, Dude, it is so good. You're you're doing yourself a disfavor or a disservice by not watching that show. Like it'll blow your mind how good it is. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I just got to give it more time because it, it starts off to me like most other anime. It's just like epic battles and like you're yeah. the chosen one and you gotta <laughs> be a hero and stuff. It's like I've seen this a million times. Yeah, it's it's just the animation. It is so freaking cool. Mm-hmm. Like I know my hero's so apparently doing really well too. I just was so confused where I left off on Crunchyroll mm-hmm. that I was just lost when I started it. So I got to figure that out too. Yeah, I'm, really I'm caught up on show. that one. It just it's new season just ended. Uh, Dang, dude! Yeah, I've been watching a lot. Really I'm through watching Doctor Stone. I'm caught up on that. It's in How do you? Season. Where do you fit all the? This is why I never see you. You're watching anime. No, all right? this is just like <laughs> when I eat meals. I watch a show. <laughs> I never watch it otherwise. It's only when I eat. Man, I don't know how I would have that much time to watch anime. I'd like to. I just, I only ever watch most of my shows as I'm falling asleep at night. So yeah, I feel that. Um, what else? Oh, did I watch through Death Note? I watched Death Note. Oh, Death Note's awesome, dude. It's I love that series. I love Death Note. I, I, I didn't realize what We're I was talking about. We're talking about the live action show, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk away right now. Just I mean, kidding, I, I've dude, never dude, seen it, but I've heard it's is... bad. Anime is outstanding. That's just funny is that the, the live action is just what got me to watch. It's actually a movie is what got me to watch the anime because I always really? knew Death, Death Note was very famous and pretty mm-hmm. mainstream in anime. But watch the movie. And I was like, that was OK. 
I was like, the the premise of it still intrigued me, so I ended up mm-hmm. watching the anime and was like hooked on that show, dude. I was addicted to it the whole time I watched it. Yeah, that's how I was. Like, I I couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah, like, we oh, won't spoil it, obviously, next? but the way that show concludes hit me like a freaking train, dude. Because yeah. you just the tension just building for so many episodes, dude. Yeah. And it's almost like this part of you, it's like he wanted you want him to get away with it, mm-hmm. and the way it all comes together is just crazy. Yep. yep. Great show. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible show. It's it's one of my favorites too. And I think that's all. Oh, I've been watching. I started Euphoria on HBO Max. Euphoria. What's it called? I messed it of up. Of all the shows to watch, you pick Euphoria? Wait, what's wrong with it? That show's a mess, dude. I've heard that it's good. I mean, there's there's aspects of it. There's a lot to... It's a, I've seen the first few episodes, I think. It's appealing to me just from like a cinematography and lighting and production standpoint. Yeah, but that's why I like it. Just the bits and pieces I've seen of it memed on the internet over the last couple of years is just ridiculous. <laughs> but I know a lot of people like it, but... Listen, uh, I, listen. I won't. I won't judge you, Jacob. Enjoy listen. what you want to enjoy. Well, you've already judged me. It's too late. But <laughs> I, I'm enjoying. It. I've watched two episodes, and I think it's very interesting, and it's entertaining. Okay. I look forward to hearing your thoughts when you get to the end. I think there's only three seasons. Okay. I didn't. From what I understand, it's probably not coming back. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Problems with the cast and director and writers and stuff. Oh. We'll see. Well, I think that's all I really uh, got to. We report. saw the uh, the Mario movie together. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. I forgot about that. That's yeah. uh, that was a good movie. I really liked it too, man. I was thoroughly entertained. Had a great time. Yeah. So it was honestly like everything I imagined it would be mm-hmm. upon seeing the trailer. You thought um, Jack initially. Black was going to be breaking out into solo? And, that and actually surprised me, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect full blown Jack Black as Bowser, but I really loved him as Bowser and. uh the singing and everything was great. Yeah, I'm glad they let him sing. <laughs> yeah, I thought Chris Pratt was great. Yep. Um, Charlie Day, awesome. I also liked Annie Taylor Joy as Peach. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat with a lot of people that say Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong is fine. He just didn't really yeah. blow my mind or anything. <laughs> it wasn't Dude. anything crazy. <laughs> I don't know why what made me laugh <laughs> some of the hardest in the movie is that right when they arrived to the Kong Kingdom and that guy in the, the the ape in the white suit opens the door is like hop in my car with me and they go on that track to like the palace i guess dude something yeah. about that ape's expression just being deadpan while he's flying around this track <laughs> <laughs> like the, his posture in that cart because he's so huge is just so funny to me every time i think about it but uh yeah i loved watching that movie it was especially fun because like obviously you and i went together on opening night but there's like a bunch of families and like little kids just having the time of their lives watching the movie so it was just a very joyful experience (laughs) yeah Yeah, i think like a couple seats down from us there was like a dad and his children they're watching it (laughs) the dad was laughing just as much as the kids were so yeah it was kind of wholesome in that way Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was a good movie Uh, i'm excited for any future mario movies they make Totally. I was hoping for a little more Yoshi. I'm glad they tease Yoshi at the end, but I was hoping for a little more. Spoiler, man. Spoiler. Yoshi Yoshi has a special place in my heart. Um, Yeah, look forward to Mario sequels, any spinoffs from that. Um, And I think Nintendo obviously has seen the true success of their franchise in Hollywood now. And so is Hollywood taking notice. So I think we will inevitably see more Nintendo movies. I would straight up love to see Nintendo Cinematic Universe. As generic as it sounds, I'd love to see like a great Zelda movie. I'd love to see a Metroid movie. Of Metroid. course, we have Mario. Maybe they'll do a Donkey Kong movie. Any other spinoffs they want to do that eventually uh, culminate in Super Smash Bros. as a movie. Yeah. You'd have to have a protagonist, I think, to make that work. Kind of like Avengers. It couldn't just be like... It couldn't be like Space Jam Legacy, where it's just an absolute mess of references and everything. But it'd be cool to have a, an actual tournament. Kind of like the... Uh, I like to think of the the tower arc from... Um, what's that show? Um... Hunter x Hunter. Oh, yeah. The tower arc. But imagine it's Super Smash Bros. where they're like these one or two characters fighting through the tournament. Could be pretty cool. Be Just, cool. You could have so much fun with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so much potential for movies. And the only movie... I've heard people go back and forth like, should they do any live action stuff? I think the only movie that could be really cool as live action is Metroid. But I'd also like to just see a Metroid movie in the same animation they can do a different animation styles depending on who's working on it, but I think just all animation for Nintendo movies would be cool. Yeah, I agree. I think doing live action's unnecessary right now. Same. I would say, I would, I would say if you're going to like establish other franchises in a movie, I would do it animated first and then maybe think about 
live action. Yeah. Plus, I think most video game adaptations I've seen are always better in some form of animation versus live action. As much as I like The Last of Us, um, everything else I've seen that's been animated, although Castlevania is loosely based on on the source material of the game, like Castlevania is phenomenal, Arcane, although I've never played League of Legends, incredible, Mario movie, great. I know there's more in there I'm forgetting. but yeah, The Warcraft uh, movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd still be open to a sequel to that. I remember seeing that with you all those years ago. It's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. At least it was made, though. It's kind of a miracle it was made in the first place. It was. Yeah, it almost didn't get made. It almost got canceled. Yeah. Um, I can't think of uh, any other movies that are notable that I've seen. I'm dying to see Evil Dead Rise, dude. I love Evil Dead. I love all the Evil Dead movies, even the originals. Hmm. So... Uh, I've heard great things about Evil Dead Rise too, and um, I've, I haven't had time to go see it. I could probably see it one night this week, I think, but I got to find someone to go with me because it's pretty. It's like hardcore horror, <laughs> and like yeah. most people aren't down for that. Yeah. Um. So to me, I'm just like stoked for that. But most people I've mentioned it to are like, "Oh wow, scary!" <laughs> I'm like I don't know if I want to see that. I'm fun. Like, All right. But uh. Just throwing that out there. Just throwing a line out there, Jacob, to see okay. if I'll I mean, really it in. Depends what night it is. I, I would perhaps be down. Okay. Maybe take me out for some food. Of course. Before or afterwards. Down, down for that with you. Um, what else we need to talk about? What, uh, what else have you been playing? I've played a couple of things. Uh, I, I mentioned Resident Evil. Cannot wait to go back to that. I might be able to squeeze in a little bit more before Zelda. So excited for Zelda, dude. Holy crap, those previews got me fired up. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, I guess the uh, the main thing I've played apart from Resident Evil is I just reviewed uh, Jedi Survivor for Cock Connected. The embargo <gasps> lifted as of today, April 26th. So I can talk about it. Um, I won't spoil anything, obviously. But uh, if you want, just like, I'm not going to spend too much time. But if you want to like watch my review, it's on Cog's YouTube channel. Uh, go in depth on everything about it. But really, really love the game. I think it's outstanding. It would have been a 9 out of 10 had it not been for the pretty bad performance on PS5. Um Apparently, that's across the board. And, and it, Preston sent me a text earlier, said he's reading it's even worse on PC, which really surprised me because I previewed the game at a preview event prior to the game's release uh, a few weeks before on PC, a pretty strong PC. And the game really mainly struggles on this main planet called Kobo. It's the main hub world of the game. It's gigantic. It's basically a full-blown open world. That's how big it is. And even at the preview event, it was mostly smooth, but there were areas where I was dropping frames at the preview event. And I, one of my buddies was at that event. I was talking to him. I was like, were you dropping frames? He's like, yeah. I was like, man, I, maybe they'll have that cleaned up by release. Like, they'll clean that up. So I reviewed the game on PS5. And thankfully, like most modern console games, there's a quality 4K 30 FPS mode. And there's a performance mode that targets, quote unquote, higher frame rates. And uh, it, it does not nail the higher frame rates. Hardly ever, really? <laughs> fortunately. And... Uh, now, in smaller areas, it's buttery smooth 60 FPS, but the resolution fluctuates dramatically in a lot of areas, and it rarely ever is locked at 60. You're, you're pushing at best 40 most of the time, and at worst, dude, this is not an exaggeration. I was hitting like 20 FPS in some areas. So thankfully, it's not game-breaking. It's just highly distracting, and it's just the, the performance was so inconsistent. That's like all my mind was thinking about the whole time. So apart from that, everything else about it is completely completely outstanding it is night and day bigger and better than the first game in every single way that's cool. all the fighting the lightsaber stances are sick there's so many dynamic ways to mix and match them there's skill treats for each one and once you get your muscle memory down so much fun to fight all the different enemy types with all the lightsaber stances that's been i'm still enjoying that i've played the game for over 30 hours still enjoying that i got a quick question um, the, yeah how, how was the blaster? Is it like a stance or is it just something? Dude, my, that's that? my favorite stance by far. It's okay. so sick. Tell me about that. So this is how it works. So it's kind of a mix of, uh, it's kind of bloodborne -y. So imagine like, uh, like your blunderbuss in Bloodborne where you almost like someone's coming to attack. You can blast them back with it if you time it right. Mm -hmm. So the, the blaster does several things. It fires standard shots, standard shots, and it locks on automatically like a Bloodborne weapon would. Okay. And that really, if it doesn't kill like a cannon fodder stormtrooper instantly, it breaks down the shields of whoever you're shooting at. So from, from a distance, you can break down shields. Um, Another thing it does is uh, there's one upgrade you can get that I mentioned kind of the Bloodborne aspect. If someone comes in for an attack, instead of parrying with your... Because you hold a lightsaber at the same time with a blaster, which is even cooler. 
So you can parry with your lightsaber, but there's this one upgrade where you can use your blaster instead and blast someone back and they'll fly backwards. That's cool. You can also change the shot type, which is the power up of your uh, your blaster. And my favorite one's called Ricochet. So you put the Ricochet bolt into your blaster and what it does is you charge it up and fire it and it ricochets between multiple enemies and <laughs> usually kills them on impact. Yeah. And it's just so sick to like blast a couple of guys with your blaster then like cut down other guys. Mm -hmm. And the way you reload your blaster is you'll fire all your shots and all you have to do is just hit guys with your lightsaber to reload it. That's awesome. And there's one power up you can do that does like these quick jabs on a guy and it doesn't really deal much damage, but it reloads your pistol really quickly. And uh, all the animations are so dope with the handgun. You'll finish killing guys and Cal will always do like a cool animation to turn off his lightsaber and put it away. But with the blaster, he'll like spin the lightsaber in one hand and the blaster in the other and holster both at the same time. <laughs> That's cool. They, all, all the animations are dope in the game. That's awesome. But uh, really sick finishers for all the lightsaber stances, especially the blaster. Um, what's cool is that you can, of course, customize your lightsaber like in the first game way more customization for that you can also do the same with the blaster which i somehow like didn't even think of before the game came out so when i started playing the game and i realized you can customize your blaster that really got me fired up because there's so many different variations and parts to find that kind of segues me into the exploration side all the planets there's two really big ones that are your main hub worlds that are packed full of a billion things to find that include like hairstyles for cow, beards, uh, jackets, shirts, pants. You can mix and match all of it. All of it has different colors. So really no two cows in anyone's playthrough could theoretically look exactly the same because there's so many different combinations. So customization is way broader in this one. And I like that a lot of these planets are just very intricately and um, thoughtfully designed. And you can tell the way, because it's kind of Dark Souls-y still in a lot of these games, or a lot of these planets. So they're very intricate and like you can't go through this door, you got to open it from a different path. So they're just very thoughtfully designed. And a lot of the things you find when exploring, you feel rewarded by because there's like these really fun traversal puzzles you got to solve or like force puzzles that uh, make once you get to the item you were going after, just all the more rewarding when you get it. They got the little... Uh, they're called meditation chambers. They're kind of like shrines in Zelda. They're only on one planet. There's probably like 15 or 20 of them. But uh, those are all very, think shrines like Zelda. You just use your force abilities and like they're all physics based. So they're pretty interesting to figure out. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, force tears. They're uh, completely dynamic. So you'll go into one and it's like a combat challenge in this like force arena. Where, for example, in my review, I talked about I had to fight two Rancors at one time. That was cool. But my favorite ones are the traversal force tears where you have to do these crazy sequences of tra traversing do between wall running and using the force to dash through these force fields and using your grapple hook. It's a lot of fun in the game as well. So I'm kind of like broad stroking over all the things in the game. But apart from the story, which I'm just going to leave out entirely um, just for the sake of spoiler, because there's a lot to spoil in the game. Uh, the gameplay is, it was super fun the entire time. I was never bored for a second with the gameplay. So they really nailed that. They're, they're really the only the negative is that it just doesn't perform consistently on really any platform right now. And uh, they even released a day zero patch. L I'm not kidding. Less than 24 hours before the embargo went up for reviews, which really frustrated me. And I actually read a couple of other reviews today of people saying that reviewing nowadays is just very bizarre because the timing can be strange. Like you review an entire game. I played this game for 28 hours before this patch came out. And it comes out the day before the embargo. I'm like, well, do I review the game I've been playing for 28 hours or the game that I'm playing now? Yeah. Now, thankfully, I didn't have to re heavily revise my review because even the patch afterwards, some ways there were more bugs than before. And then other ways it was slightly better. Yeah. And I really, and again, I, I don't understand game development. I don't know if it was a quick patch and just they were hoping it would improve performance. It was supposed to, but it didn't nearly... Uh, it didn't improve it nearly as as, it, as much as it needs to, unfortunately. But again, not game breaking doesn't ruin the game. It's just distracting and kind of a bummer. But if you can get through that aspect of it, everything else about it is incredible. And I highly recommend playing it if you like the first one. Yeah, yeah, I really did enjoy the first one. So I'm considering it, but I don't know for sure because I am going to be playing a lot of WoW the new season so we'll see yeah plus zelda's we'll right around the corner and zelda's coming out so what time mm -hmm. i'm not gonna be playing wow i'm gonna be playing zelda so yeah that's one of the main reasons i chose to review it um i haven't reviewed games in a while but i said yes to the opportunity um because one i did do the preview event i did review the first game for cog that was part of it but 
I just happened to have a few days where I wasn't working as much as normal. Mm -hmm. So I had that window and I also had the thought, I'm like, well, real, realistically, by the time the game launches, I won't have nearly as much time to play. And I know Zelda's coming out soon after. And I didn't really want to have to either, I, I guess I did rush through it for the review, but still playing and I have a little extra room to play it now before Zelda comes out to do any extra stuff I want to do. So I really just wanted to open up that window for Zelda when it comes out because I know that game's going to consume my life for a while. Yeah. At least all of May is going to consume my life. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. I, I was kind of just kind of lukewarm on it. I knew it was probably going to be pretty good, but once they start showing gameplay, like I, I got really, really excited for it. Yeah, let's... uh. Let's talk about that while we're on it. Um, okay. So you've seen some of the preview stuff that came out today. What do mm -hmm. you think? Yes, that was pretty cool. I saw a lot of the, what is it? Is it called modifier? or is it fuse? Whatever. A bunch of different abilities. I can't remember the names of all of it, but just really exploring the sandbox possibilities with the abilities that you have. Yeah, I love They're seeing, pretty wild. There's a lot of stuff you can do. and There's, there's just so many ways you can fuse. Like, and there's so many resources that just you find all over the grounds and like just uh, draw from enemies and you can just fuse them all to weapons. You can, you can craft all these vehicles basically and just fly up in the air, or, like drive a car. Like there's just so much, or, you know, make a, like an engine boat or something like that. You can just do so much cool stuff to traverse to different areas of the game that you want to go. And it's just, I, I can just imagine the endless possibilities of seeing a place that I want to go to. And then trying to find things around me to help me get to that place that I, doesn't seem like I can get there right now. But if I just be a little creative and, you know, use my imagination and the resources, the resources around me, perhaps I can get there. So just just that idea alone makes me really excited. And just seeing like all the stuff in the sky and the sky diving from those islands down back down to the world. Like it just seems like a lot of fun. And then like they showed. Sort of like the, tr I think the last trailer that came out got me even more pumped because we saw like Ganon, or what we think was Ganon, I I'm, I'm assuming. Um, and those, that trailer like really, really got me hyped. Um, it was just, it was a good trailer. So, I mean, I wonder if there's going to be like a bunch of shrines in this game. I haven't really been paying attention as much as I should, but it'd be cool if there were a lot of shrines to go see again. Yeah, I haven't heard of uh, shrines. I, I know the rumors are supposed to be dungeons or temples, kind of like traditional Zelda, that okay. I'm assuming, of course, will take advantage of all the, the abilities that you have. Maybe you acquire these series of abilities in temples. I don't Maybe. know. That'd be more Zelda-like. Mm -hmm. Preston can probably obviously provide a lot more context to this. He's more heavily rooted in not only info in this game, but Zelda lore in general. But uh, I love just from a broad perspective is that they're, they've clearly – dug so deep into the sandbox possibilities you think about breath breath of the wild already had a pretty interesting sandbox and I, i've been fascinated that years later we still see unbelievably insane clips that pop up on youtube and twitter people just doing the craziest things yeah. and that's in breath of the wild dude just seeing what little i've seen so far in tears of the kingdom we're going to see ridiculous things happen not only between just the traversal aspects of what you can do but also the combat yeah scenarios <laughs> And it's cool that uh, I watched a uh, skill ups preview and I like that in, in combat, you can really take advantage of every single resource you found. Like you think of the one, like you attach an eyeball to your arrow, it'll be a homing missile because mm -hmm. of that. And then all the different jellies and stuff have different like ice and fire and electricity. And all that was just fascinating to me. You can attach uh, a giant spiky ball that's like rolling down towards you to your weapon to make like a club. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and like the reverse time aspect ability where you can do that. Like there's just so many crazy things that players are going to discover. And that's what I'm most excited about is that I think that's the reason why Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring are recently often in the same conversation is they're both those games open these doors for you to just be truly free in an open world. You don't feel locked down for different reasons, but especially in Tears of the Kingdom, there's just so many things that people are going to discover that I feel like even years after release, like with Breath of the Wild, we're just going to keep seeing amazing things. So very, very excited for that. And uh, 
I think I've definitely seen enough. Even the initial gameplay preview, like I was already sold, of course. Yeah. But especially after these previews, man, I am so, so excited for that. And uh, I'm just going to let myself enjoy it all, all month of May. Because I know we had uh, Final Fantasy Diablo coming in summer as well. Dude, Final Fantasy 16 also looks so cool. Yeah. I've also like held off from watching watching as little as possible Eesh. about that. You should have watched. Did you watch the state of play? And I intentionally only watched like 10 seconds of it because I trust me, dude, I know it looks amazing. I just I want as much of it to be a surprise as possible because okay. I think it looks incredible. So you're going to play it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Dude. okay. It looks so much better and more interesting than Final Fantasy 15, oh, dude. I totally and agree. I, I've, been, I've been I've felt better over the years because I, I knew I wasn't the only one who didn't love Final Fantasy 15. And there are more like like me <laughs> out there. I'm not saying it's a bad game, but like 16 makes 15 look like a joke. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> So, very excited for 16. Yeah. Well, I got a uh, what's his face from Final Fantasy 14. That's why it's good. I forgot yeah, his name. Yeah. Yoshida. Mm-hmm. And the combat looks so gnarly, dude. So sick. Um, can't wait for that. Um, you and I played a bit of the Diablo beta together, didn't we? A few weeks ago. Oh, no, we played we separate play and just talked about it. No, we yeah. didn't. Um, you know what? I barely played it. I played it for like half an hour because I had to go to work or something that day. But I'm very excited bit. for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I know Preston's excited for it too. Really? I didn't know he was. Gonna we play. really need to make the time at least a two or three nights out of the week minimum, like we did back in the day, to just play for a couple hours at least. Dude, I have a laptop that I could just bring over to your place. Dude, play what, with you. Let's do it. One hundred percent. Let's dim do the that. lights. Get a candle. Yes, going. dude. I got, I got my lights dimmed right now. I'm in tavern mode right now, dude. I'm ready. You are. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. But yeah, I, I also so played the beta a little bit. Um, I didn't play the... There were two weekends. There was one for, like, if you pre-ordered. And the other was uh, just the free weekend. So I played the second weekend. And I played Rogue all the way up to 25, I think, was the max. Um, tried the world boss. That was... I got my ass kicked. We didn't kill it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I was with a bunch of I mean I died a lot too but it was just a shit show basically. Um um the leveling experience was it was pretty cool. It, the game's very just visceral and just dark and gruesome Love like that. it's awesome. Um this looks like a hopeless world and I'm and I'm having a lot of fun just just destroying demons in this tragic dark world. It's 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 great. Um I tried out necromancer too. That class is just OP as hell like I, I could kill everything in just a few casts compared to like my rogue that you know i actually had to like hit enemies and run back so i don't get you know meleeed to death and you have to be a lot more clever on the rogue just because you're a little more squishy but on necromancer you just have your minions charge at everything and you know, nothing ever touches you it's great um yeah, that's then, what i played as was necromancer <laughs> oh did you okay yeah how how uh high did you get how, how many levels i can't remember Okay. But I I only played for like 30, 45 minutes. Okay, so probably not very far. Yeah. Um, yeah, Necromancer is probably my second favorite. And then I also tried the uh, the wizard, the sorcerer. And that one's also OP. You're like flame hydras. Like you throw that thing down and it just kills everything. It's ridiculous. It was so overpowered. Um, easily probably the, the class that does the most damage so far. But I'm, I'm sure they'll and everything and make good but it, from what i heard it seemed like the druid and the barbarian were both pretty weak so we'll see if that changes but i, I didn't really i mean i sometimes i play barbs in diablo but i don't know i just really don't feel like playing a barb like they added the class that i wanted the most which is the rogue uh, instead of like a monk so that that's mm-hmm. my class fantasy right there so that's what i'll be playing yeah. on day one and I've always gonna... enjoyed support characters in games like this. I definitely want to play mm-hmm. a support type class. Necromancer is more support, mostly, right? Not really. I, I know, know, I know they really, can really deal s- a lot of damage, but yeah. I like crowd controlling and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of why I like Demon Demon Slayer and Diablo 3, like shooting up my arrow volleys and stuff and hitting crowds from a distance and everything. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Rogue can kind of be like that in this game. You can, you can spec into ranged or melee. Nice. So you can either I know use... you're a rogue guy though. You're gonna go rogue okay. main playthrough, right? Yeah, I don't want to play. Who cares? I don't want to play the same thing. I want to. Oh. I want our our party to be diverse. Okay. Play styles. Okay. What's Preston gonna play? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'm I'm so open to whatever that I'll, I'll let Preston do what he wants and I'll I'll pick based off that. I bet he'll play sorcerer if I had to guess. 
That seems like what you he think? would want to play. Yeah. I don't remember what he played in uh, Diablo 3. I think he played Sorcerer. <laughs> okay, interesting. All right. I think you Fine played by me. Demon Hunter and I played Barb back in the day. Um, good times, Yeah, dude. the game looks really good. And they, they've had like several um, developer like chats and stuff. And they've done stuff with the community. So it seemed to be like listening to feedback. And, you know, they really want this game to do well. So they make money. So... <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm gonna. I'll probably pre-order like the whatever version I need to to play it four days early. So I'm really excited. I didn't know they're doing that. Cool. Yeah, I, it might be like the seventy dollar or the eighty or the ninety dollar version. I can't remember. Oof. Yeah, it's. I think it's most that has been eighty to play early. Okay, well, you're just That's not excited like I am. <laughs> That's what it is. I've been buying a lot of deluxe editions. I bought the deluxe of Harry Potter. I bought deluxe of RE. If it's a game I'm like really know I'm going to be passionate about, I'll go deluxe for sure. Yeah, you got to get that Punisher early. I hear you. Yeah, I don't really buy deluxes anymore. Only for like Blizzard games. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm such a fan. I know I'll buy the deluxe of Spider-Man inevitably. I will buy the deluxe of... um, What else is coming out later this year? I'm forgetting. Uh... That's a good question. I've heard that Sony's next showcase is supposed to just destroy everything, which I'm actually not surprised to hear if that's a, that rumor is true because they've been quiet for so long, which just makes, I know Sony's like been kind of goofy with Jim Ryan and like the whole Microsoft things made them look a little silly. But I think Sony as a brand has always just seemed cool since the PS4 era is because they're like, they aren't very loud. They take their time with all their games. Most of their games launch in a great state. Mm-hmm. Most of their games are great and uh, they just like take their time and like they bailed on E3 before anyone else is making, which makes them cooler. I think <laughs> they're like, we're, we're too good for this now. Like they're we're not so paying cool. for this. <laughs> yeah. So Sony is just, is just, and especially because Microsoft's such in a bizarre place now, it just makes Sony look cooler. Yeah. Um, hashtag not fanboys, by the way, but um, they're just on a good track, PS5 selling very well. It's finally available in stores. Um, PSVR 2 is a different story. We'll see how that plays out. Mm-hmm. But uh, PlayStation 5 is in a good place, and I just can't wait to see like everything. I'd like to see it like a, a decent slate of like at least four or five first party titles that are coming between Spider Man 2 later this year and through 2024. Is Spider Man 2 so, coming out this year? I they still have that? a gut feeling it will. I really think it will. Wow. That'd be a yeah. crazy winter title. Yeah. And and mark my words, I've said it before, that mo- that game is going to blow people's minds. It's going to make the first game look like nothing, dude. Yeah. I just, I, I get this feeling when I play games, dude, it's like the develop, developers figure it out by the end of the development cycle. And that, and there's evidence of that in Miles Morales because Miles Morales from a gameplay standpoint, fluidity, animation standpoint was already better than the first game. They figured it out and they just can propel from there into the stratosphere like i know it's gonna blow people's minds dude i hope so, so. it will yeah very re- excited regrettably to see, i never uh, uh got the platinum in miles morales and i said i was going to but i didn't i was like two trophies yeah. short but i never went back to it <laughs> really really loved miles morales yeah so i think the main reason i loved it one gameplay is great but Miles Morales as a character is awesome, but it also kind of gave you what Peter Parker probably went through in a different way. But like being that young kid, like taking on his Spider-Man powers and like trying to be the hero for the first time kind of emulates the beginning of becoming Spider-Man has made it especially enjoyable for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, I don't know where we're, oh yeah, we're talking about Diablo ended up on PlayStation. Let's, let's touch on E3 for a second. E3 was canceled again to no one's surprise. Oh no. And uh, likely never returning, but you know, the the folks behind PAX are in control of it now and claim like, we're going to figure this out. We're going to talk people into coming back room. Maybe we'll figure it out. I don't know. But I, I think uh, the guys in Sacred Symbols say this best. That they, they probably haven't said it recently, but several episodes ago, they were talking about just like E3 and like why it's canceled. It just they, They'll say it much better than I will, but it makes total sense because it's so astronomically expensive for just even a single publisher to attend and like do the whole show floor thing. And the presentation is just crazy expensive. It just makes so much more sense in the digital age. You do their showcases online. It's not nearly as hype or as uh, exciting. So you're not there with a crowd, but, and I will always miss E3 and I'm so, so grateful that Cog invited me to go. The last two relatively real E3s were 2017, 2018 is 2019 is when Sony bailed. Mm-hmm. So the last two E3 Sony ever attended, I got to attend, which is such a gift and privilege <laughs> and I'm so thankful for. 
Because those two E3s, man, were unbelievable for me. Because obviously it was a dream come true, but everything else, even outside of the reveals, was just so much fun. And um, I get why so many games journalists and influencers that have been many more times than I have, like kind of mourn the loss of it because the the experiences you have there are just like unlike anything else. Out of all the preview events I've been able to attend, all the review events, like E3 was king by far. It was just such a fun time to be a video yeah. game fan. Like there was nothing like just forgetting all of your responsibilities for a few days and just yeah, dude, getting together. We with, went with hard on our YouTube to, channel with E3 I too. Did. That's how we kind of started. I think started. it was 20, 2015 and 16. We went super hard with coverage. Yep. Didn't get any much traction from it, but yeah, we enjoyed doing it. It was doing still that. fun. <laughs> Saw some yeah, good food fun. and got hyped about some, some previews. <laughs> Yeah, the most emotional. I wish I'd recorded it, dude. The most emotional I've ever seen Preston, pro- likely will ever see Preston in his lifetime, was the re- the full reveal of Spider Man on PS4 back in the day. He probably won't even cry like that when he has it, when his baby's born, you know. That, exactly, that's the joke <laughs> I've always made. Like I can't because I've known Preston for the majority of my life now, and uh, I've never even seen him come close to being that emotional about anything ever. <laughs> like it shocked me. It shocked everybody. Nobody knew that was coming. Yeah, dude. I couldn't believe it either. So, man, such memories. And that really can't be emulated without stuff being revealed at E3, you know? So, I mean, digital events, one thing, but E3 is different. Yeah, yeah so I will. Shame. I will miss those live shows so much. They were so cool. Mm-hmm. Now, all we get were just these PowerPoint trailer shows. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame. So I get it. I mean, it's quick news everyone's instantly informed they save so much money it's yeah. ridiculous and they can completely control everything on their end yeah speaking and there's of, no cringe uh, usually <laughs> yeah, things being canceled let's let's hop into jason schreier's news today that the uk this is the headline uk says it is blocking microsoft's 69 billion purchase of Acti- activision blizzard microsoft says it'll appeal a lot of people are saying, I'm not going to go into the too, too many of the details, but people are saying that it's like a death sentence for the deal at this point. It's not good. <laughs> um, and there's speculation that there's, there's another rumor recently that Microsoft is extremely dissatisfied with the Xbox division, which between that and now most likely the deal being blocked, Phil Spencer is probably out after this, unfortunately. Because um, you think about Xbox post 360 era because the 360 era was the golden age of xbox i adored the 360 era i was all about 360 dude and uh since 360 dude it's just been a mess at xbox Mm -hmm. they've really like not done anything (laughs) they haven't stewarded anything well and there's all this different talk about how obviously no one's buying xbox games anymore because of uh, Game Pass. Game, Game Pass is a great service, but I've heard other people say that like once they play everything they want to play in Game Pass, they just cancel their subscription. So it's like not growing much because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I love Game Pass, it's made, I've been able to play a lot of games uh, for a much a highly reduced cost that I wouldn't have otherwise played because of it. But um, the Xbox Series S is kind of a mess and like hindering a lot of developers because they have to factor that into the the development and it's not great. And, uh, and just the whole like socio political umbrella that is this Activision blizzard deal. And it's just been crazy for the last year. Yeah. Um, and it just seemingly is going nowhere. And if it falls through, dude, that's just a catastrophe. They'll be fine. Microsoft will be fine, but, uh, just a, I guess a reputation side and financial side, they're taking a hit and people will have to have to take the fall for that. Unfortunately, yeah. So it, it just seems like all these Xbox games have taken so long to come out. Like we're still waiting on all of these like exclusive titles. That yeah. I don't know what to think about so Redfall either because yeah. I love Arcane and there's been bits and pieces of Redfall that have intrigued me, but most of what I've seen hasn't grabbed me yet. Mm-hmm. And they're really because it's their first big exclusive in a while. And yeah. Arcane's a great studio. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope it's fun. I mean, if it's going to be Game Pass Day once, I'm definitely going to try it. But, uh, yeah. When does it that, drop? Uh, Do you know? I think it's, dude, I think it's like the same week as Zelda. <laughs> I'm not, I think it's like two days before Zelda. That's not good. Two or three days. So it's going to probably get eaten alive. Yeah, by they're that. trying to kill their own game. Yeah. So that's a problem for sure. Starfield, I hope, is awesome. I, I hope I just, it is. I just want to get enveloped by another Bethesda RPG, dude. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I, I was listening to the opening theme of Skyrim, and I, I was just like, "Oh my god, this song is so incredible! It is so it is. epic." It like, is. am I ever gonna feel like this again playing another Bethesda <laughs> game? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I yearn for that, dude. I mean, I've had incredible experiences in other open world RPG esque games. You think about, I, I, I think Bethesda is its own thing entirely. But Zelda, incredible memories. Elden Ring. Um, it's probably another one in there. I'm forgetting. Oh, Witcher Three, of course. Mm. Um, but Bethesda really has that that flavor that's uniquely their own that I haven't felt. And, that, and Press and I are two of the few people that really did love Fallout 4. I really love Fallout 4. Fallout 3, I, I remember more fondly, of course. But the Skyrim, the Fallout 3, I want that feeling again. That's so rare. And you really only get that from Bethesda. So yeah. um, really hoping it delivers. It's been development for a very long time. And uh, I think they're doing a showcase for that this summer. I think in June I we're seeing more of it. Hopefully. So <laughs> out this fall. I'm still waiting for that hype moment from that. Yeah. So let's see it, Todd. Yeah. Todd. That first demo they did was not too impressive. There were yeah, things about fine. it that on paper sounded great, but seeing them in action didn't blow my mind just yet. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see. What else we got, Jacob? What are we forgetting here? I don't know. I'm looking at my list here. Talk uh, about E3. I think we've hit everything on my list. Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. What do you think of that demo they did, that presentation? Have you seen it? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. Um, animation, stunning. Uh, everything else was pretty lame, if I'm being honest. It's uh, just very much looks like a hero. I guess it's kind of a looter shooter because you're outfitting your villains your suicide squad with various weapons a bunch of different cosmetics i'm assuming but i think like from a presentation standpoint it looked very impressive just the gameplay looks super lame mm-hmm. also ridden with microtransactions so just a really poor public reception to it and shortly thereafter there were rumors of a delay now the delay is official all the way into next year yeah not exactly sure what they're, go- what they're going to do but that that game has just been in development for way too long dude and it's just at the point where i'm like I don't I don't see in any world where they could potentially do anything that really salvages what that game is probably going to end up being. Yeah, they probably really dumped so much out. money into it. <laughs> oh, I know. And that's the thing, too, is that WB is like you have to put it out like it's you can't just outright cancel a game that's been in development that long. It's yeah. one thing if it's been like in pre-production for three years or like I've heard of stories of games being in development for four years that don't get very far and they get canned. But this looks very far along, obviously. Um, it just bums me out because Rock City is such a remarkable studio and Arkham Knight that I began replaying actually late last year is such a phenomenal game minus a few of the boss fights, a few of the side missions and, and the main story was kind of dumb to me <laughs> in hindsight as well. But it was. <laughs> most everything else about that game is excellent and I was hoping we'd get one more Batman outing from them that they because Arkham Knight was almost a masterpiece. Arkham City really is I still think the best game in that trilogy, but there were great, great things about Arkham Knight that they could have really expanded upon. And just imagine a current gen Batman game because even dude, Arkham Knight still looks stunning from last generation. Still looks great. So I would love to see one more outing from them. But I know you would. You need your Batman. You're not getting your fill. Yeah, we'll see. It might be one of the situations they put out Suicide Squad. It doesn't. I don't think it'll tank. It'll probably be okay. I might find an audience, but just to regain their prestige reputation maybe they'll go back to batman and i find it very hard batman. not to believe they won't go back to batman after this <laughs> yeah they know like wb knows that they can make a good batman game they've done it several mm-hmm. times and that's probably the most safest thing that they could do <laughs> yeah that's kind of how uh cd Pro- i know cd project red is kind of outsourcing the witcher remake to a different studio if i'm not mistaken but um i know they're doing a new witcher trilogy or working on a new witcher game obviously right after the cyberpunk uh i guess it was more of a disaster on social media but that game's really come along it's it's in a great state now i've played a lot of it actually off and on over the last year and uh i i do think it's a really awesome game but it it just launched so poorly that it just like really put a bad bad stain on their reputation so yeah it did um kind of how they're going back to witcher i think uh rocksteady will 
hopefully inevitably go back to Batman after Suicide Squad. Yeah, I've started. And we'll Cyberpunk. wait another eight years for an, uh, another Batman game. We'll be like forty by the time a Batman <laughs> game comes out. That's so sad. Yeah, I started Cyberpunk for the third time recently, and then I quit again. Like I just can't convince myself to keep playing that game. I don't know what it is. I'm hoping one of these days I can just be really in the mood to play it and just stick with it. Mm. It's just I, so I have been flowing that in my mood for that game. There have been points where I'll play for like a week or two, and then I'll yeah. take three months off and then i'll come back for a few days and then i'll take another month off so it's I like can't, i can't i, can't I just can't that. get locked into it for some reason there's no way i can do that because I, I have no idea what's going on anymore i completely mm-hmm. forget so that, at that point so, i'm just like i guess i start over you know yeah i think i just like existing in night city because it, it runs yeah. surprisingly well on my pc and it looks pretty good so just existing in that world is cool to me speaking of night city that's another anime i watched with cyberpunk edge runners oh yeah I, I watched that as well it's that's, great that's a cool last show i love that it is a cool show very cool i love that it's uh, like i love it it was a li- they may do more but i love that it feels like it's a limited series it's like yeah. very straightforward storytelling great characters yeah, i don't know how they would continue <laughs> that story <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could do like different storylines in that same world, same animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, really strong series for sure. Yeah. It's very sad in the first episode too. It might have been the second. I can't remember. But it starts off very sad. The whole the whole series is kind of ridden with emotion. Really, right. really emotional ending as well. Mm-hmm. For sure. Good, so, uh, good soundtrack too. Yeah. One song in particular. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a song that I added. They added that song to uh, the video game. If if it was if it wasn't already in the game, they added it to the game. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be dumb not to. Assuming they have their rights. Right. Well, Jacob, is there anything else you want to touch on before we can jump into Ask OG? Uh, Are we forgetting something? uh, I don't think so, man. If we are, it's not that important. Otherwise, we'd 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 have said it, right? Yeah, I guess so. It's been great catching up, though. I'm glad that yeah. we're playing great games currently, and so many more fun games coming out. I think uh, I have a good feeling. I probably said this a bunch over the last couple of years, but Preston has told me he's going to be in town for a few weeks soon. Oh, really? And I can't imagine a world where he can't hop on to do a podcast with us for an hour or an a, and a half oh, really? one you day. Think so you actually <laughs> <Yeah>. think so? <laughs> We'll see. What's what's wrapped around your image on Discord? Where? Oh, oh, my picture. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like a limited time thing you can do to your profile picture. They're, I think it's cats. Oh no, it's dogs. It's little puppies. How'd you get it? I don't remember. <laughs> Let me look at my cool. profile. <laughs> Let's see here. Edit user profile. Oh, so go to uh, click the cog at the bottom near your name, user settings. Okay. Go to my account. All righty. Then edit user edit, profile. Got then it. It's the avatar decoration. It's a limited time customization. Change, change avatar? Ad- change, or change decoration. Got there it. you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, look oh, at those. Look at that, dude. <laughs> not, not very many. No. That's interesting. Oh, wait, it's exclusive to Nitro. Oh. Is it just letting you test it and it's like, okay, you got to unlock Probably. it with Nitro? Yeah. yeah I, no, I, I have Nitro, so. <laughs> what is Nitro? It's just like a subscription to Discord. It unlocks <laughs> other features. Allows you to have other Great. things. <laughs> allows you to, like, use uh, movable, or what are they called, like, like movable emotes, the ones that like move and stuff like that. <laughs> it's dumb, okay? It's dumb to pay for something that's free. But I gotta support them, you know? And my guildies is it for uh, voice. So I hear you. I, and I can change my name in different servers with Nitro too, so. Nice. It's nice to like change my name to the character that I am on WoW well in that server, so. For sure. But yeah. I don't think we're missing anything. Great. Well, that brings us to Ask IOG. Uh, Ask IOG is the uh, part of the show where we answer your questions submitted through any of our social media at It's Obvious Gaming. Email to us at It's Obvious Gaming or gmail.com or the, uh, did I already say Discord? I'm not reading my script like normal. (laughs) 
or on Discord in the Ask IOG section and always include the hashtag Ask IOG so that we know you want your question read live on the show. And we got one, Jacob, and that's okay. That's a big one. Comes from 32 Speedster, Sam Harris. He says, fellows, how you doing? It's been a while. I'm doing fairly well. I'm missing home quite a bit, but I'm sure as things get busy with my quote unquote job, time will fly by. So I become, for the foreseeable future, exclusively a Nintendo and mobile phone gamer. <laughs> Man, what a tragi- tragedy that would be for me, personally. Hey, until Zelda, Zelda comes out. <laughs> yeah, until Zelda comes out. Um, I could have gotten a gaming laptop, but I didn't feel comfortable traveling with it. Since I'm, a limited, since I'm limited with my gaming options, I have been working on my backlog. Specifically, a certain open-world adventure game that has a sequel coming out very soon. Oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my question. Surprising that was on your backlog. Uh, say your favorite game of all time is getting a sequel and it looks like it improves on every aspect in every possible way. Um, you're definitely going to play. And this particular sequel is a long time coming, so you would play through the previous before the new one, re- or would you play through the previous before the new one releases? Is it necessary to do so or is it better to play it blind, so to speak? Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Have a great week, gentlemen. I miss you guys. Uh, after you, Jacob. Hold on. And Sam, thanks for attention. writing in, man. <laughs> Thanks, thank you for writing. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to you. Okay. Your uh, favorite game of all time is getting a sequel. Um, what would you want in it? How, how does it improve on the original? And would you play the original before the sequel comes out? Like replay it? Oh my gosh. Hmm. I got pretty vanilla answers, but are realistic. I would definitely play through the original for sure. If my f- wait hold on i don't know if i understand the question your favorite game of all time is getting a sequel what right. is it i so guess just, apart from wow world of warcraft 2 oh can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think those memes of uh the guy from spider-man I always forget his name uh where he's like the inventor of sex like wait, the inventor what? of sex announces he, he's uh the release date for sex too <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny can you imagine <laughs> yeah i can't dude cannot that's that what's that's what we're talking about jake can you imagine a sequel yeah. to your favorite game i'm trying to sit here and think of what like a wow two would be because like, i love those jokes press and i used to make of like the layman gamer where all we really play ever is like madden <laughs> uh need for speed and like the only rpg we've ever played is skyrim because it was so famous yeah. So like, oh, dude, like, like, I wonder if Skyrim 2 is going to come out anytime soon. <laughs> Skyrim 2. Um, why, why? Okay. I'm going to mention something real quick, Jacob, before I forget. Okay. Um, have you seen the Unrecord gameplay that went viral? No. It's like the fisheye body cam camera perspective. Mm-mm. Oh, dude, it looks so sick. It's uh, I think it's a small indie team, but they're developing it on Unreal Engine 5. And with all the filters and everything, it looks pretty hyper-realistic. You should link it to me. And uh, yeah, it looks really, really cool. Like incredible animation with the gunplay and like the reload animations and just the body cam perspective is super unique. And supposedly the premise is you're playing as a cop trying to solve a murder mystery or something. But gameplay looks really, really cool. It's... uh. Probably, I assume, still very early in development, but it just looks really impressive, and the premise really intrigues me. So, that game looks really cool. And there's also a horror game that I'll send you a link to that's also in development, and this is an amazing premise. I can't remember the name of it, but you play as a guy um, looking for his dog in the woods, and it's pitch black outside. Your dog got lost in the woods. You have to find your dog, but these horrific things are in the woods, and like you're searching these houses and stuff. Yeah. And uh, even the first 20 seconds horrified me, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, th- I think you'd really like it. That sounds cool. So, uh, yeah, I'll send you links to those. Yeah, definitely send me that. Um, so I'm going to use like a, a Kingdom Hearts as an example for this question, I think. Um, I remember when 3 was coming out and I was like trying to get myself hyped up. So I played... I remember they released so one one of the mini games that they released in the Kingdom Hearts universe. I forgot exactly what it was called, but it was it was some really long and complicated name with numbers and stuff and like prologue and epilogue in the name. But 
I remember I played that and then I like thought to myself, should I go back and replay every single like at least one and two, like at least one and two and maybe like the game that's a prequel to one. Like maybe I'll play that one, too. But then I just thought, do I really want to do like put all that time into replaying all these games just to like get excited or like to refresh my memory about the story going into three? And I decided not to because I realized I could just watch a recap video on YouTube. So that's exactly what I did. And I, I got myself refreshed with the story. And that's not to say I don't enjoy those games. It's just that as I've gotten a little older now, my time has become so just short for the time that I have to play games or the time that I want to play games. So I, I just made the decision that, you know what, I'm just going to watch the story, embrace it that way, and then be ready to jump into three, which is what I did. And I was still streaming back then. So I streamed the whole game, which was fun. Um, but to answer Sam's question, I don't think you necessarily need to play through all the sequel or the, you know, the games that came before the new one that's coming out. Um, I mean, if it was like a case where I've never played Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom was coming out, I don't think there's a world where I wouldn't play Breath of the Wild first. Um, I probably would have played it like months in advance because I think you'd be there's a probably a pretty good chance that you might be a little burnt out on just going from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom because that's a lot of just the same thing or a lot. Not only is it this the same um, engine and game world, but you you might there's a chance that you might just get kind of everything might become a little monotonous. Um, not to say that it definitely would because there's a lot of variety in. Um, Breath of the Wild, and then going into Tears of the Kingdom, it's they're they're really expanding on a lot of the systems. So I really don't think there's any bad way to go about this problem or this question. I mean, if if you have the time and you feel passionate enough to want to replay through all, all the games that came before a new sequel coming out, I think that's cool. But also, if you just want to, you know, get some stuff done that you might need to get done while the game's coming out or while it's out. If you can get that done early so you have more time to play the game when it comes out, maybe you should spend your time doing that. I don't know. So you can go about it either way, I think. How do you want to answer this question? Uh, <clears throat> favorite games getting a sequel. One of my favorite games was Arkham City. It got a sequel that I mostly liked. I was just talking about it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a follow-up to Arkham Knight. It doesn't really have to be a continuation of that story. But uh, just another Batman game from Rock City, I'd really love. Um, yeah, you're really getting uh, Kill the Justice League. <laughs> yeah, totally. Is that not good enough? Same universe. Same Arkham universe. Um, favorite games getting a sequel. I don't think Hunt Showdown really needs a sequel. I do love that game. <laughs> yeah, but um, when was the last time you played Hunt? It's been a while. It's probably been about six months. Was it the last time you played with me? No, I, I played okay. since then. <laughs> um. Spider-Man's getting a sequel. I love that game. It's uh, a good one. I would love a Halo game that isn't... Uh, Halo Infinite doesn't suck. It's just kind of <laughs> not amazing. <laughs> so I'd love another amazing <laughs> Halo game, which could be coming from certain affinity, hopefully in the near future. It's not a must-need. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's a must-need, but it, it, it is, it is des a desire I'd love to have fulfilled. Okay. Is uh, another amazing Halo game that's kind of uh, beloved by all. So, I don't maybe know if we'll get day. another Halo. <laughs> Certain Affinity's working on a Halo title right now. Are they? Yeah. And, uh, uh, so okay. The rumor for a long time has been it's been a battle royale, but supposedly it's become more than that, and uh, it is being developed on Unreal Engine four, I believe, if not five. So, do you think it should have launched see. with one Infinite? Dude, it, that game hardly launched as is. <laughs> so, um, in a perfect I, world, I, I, I guess. But there really is potential for a Halo Battle Royale. But Battle Royale is kind of like in a stagnant place right now. Yeah. So it wouldn't be that interesting at this point. Mm. But I look forward to seeing what Bungie does reviving Marathon as a uh, not a looter shooter, a uh, extraction shooter. Has potential. A Bungie's really great at a lot of things so obviously any type of shooter so they've really nailed the 
uh, looter shooter these days that a lot of games have tried to emulate and failed. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, Destiny's kind of fizzled out with their li- latest expansion. They still have a mega, um, ni- I don't know if it niche is the right word, but c- dedicated fan bases still play. Oh, yeah, Destiny. I'm not saying that. I just mean like I got a lot of bad press. <laughs> That's well, I think it was I, the story that got a bad press. The gameplay was praised, but it was the story apparently it wasn't uh, impressive. I heard the raid was kind of weird too. Like I haven't heard about the raid. I've, I've just heard like the new uh, supers and stuff, and like the the strand oh, yeah. ability is really that cool. that stuff looks cool. Yeah, like I see people sling like swinging yeah. around each other and stuff. It looks yeah. really cool. <laughs> Me, Zach and I and Andy tried to get back into Destiny Two. Really? a few months ago and it was overwhelming dude we just could not handle it it was too yeah. much i heard there's like twenty thousand pop-ups when you launch the game yeah it was crazy we just couldn't figure out what to do where to go <laughs> we were just aimless dude it That's was so, so much i just wish they could uh almost do a Preston and i were talking about this because he kind of got overwhelmed too he said he figured it out it just took a while mm-hmm. i i wish they could do like a soft relaunch and like almost not rebrand destiny but like consider it like invite a, a new crowd in with like a, a like an expansion even after uh, the one they just did. That's sort of like a soft relaunch that like streamlines everything and makes it like very easy to follow. That would probably bring me back into Destiny because even though we did, we went back and messed around did a couple of strikes, a couple of story missions, and it was very fun. I remembered what I loved about Destiny, especially on PC. It's the game, the gunplay just feels outstanding in those games mm. or that game, I should say. Um, so I'd like to see uh, a reason for them to streamline it and invite new new and old players back to uh really understand it and get back into that because i'd really give destiny a chance again if i could just understand it without having to work really hard to understand it so that's just me yeah yeah it's 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 one of those games i would like to revisit one day but i don't know if i ever will (laughs) in a perfect (sighs) world i'd have time to go back to it yeah, here we got Diablo coming out. We don't have time for Destiny. We don't have time for it. Oh, We've been waiting yeah, over ten years for Diablo. Hmm. I mean, we had uh, Diablo Immortal. That was fun. I played that for like ten seconds. I played that for far longer than I should have. <laughs> wow, dude! <laughs> I got to yeah, max level. I, I did not love that. Yeah, it was bad. I'll never play that again. <laughs> what a trash game. Yeah, thankfully the real game's coming soon. Man, so it's such an amazing year for games, dude. It's been so great so far. It's one of those rare years where just everything's hitting so hard. Yeah. And I I have no doubt that every game we're looking forward to over the course of the summer is also going to be incredible. Um, And beyond Spider-Man, hopefully we'll get one, even if it's not even a PlayStation exclusive, just another amazing game toward the end of the year would be awesome. Yeah. So maybe something will surprise us from Sony that we just didn't even see coming when they do their showcase. Maybe. Never know. Maybe we'll get the uh, the Naughty Dog multiplayer game. I hope so. I think last I heard, it's like supposedly supposedly definitely coming next year. But I'm really really intrigued to see what that is. Maybe so. Anyway, I think that'll about do us do it for us, Jacob. I have no idea how long we've been talking. Uh, This was 280. Love talking to you. Yeah, this uh, is fun. I like these just like laid back, just talking about games episodes, dude. It was fun. Yeah. It's good catching up. See, when we don't do this for so long, we have so much to catch up on, so we don't have to do yeah, a real show. <laughs> totally. But uh, yeah, I would do this every week if we could. Uh, it's not that we don't want to. It's just life is crazy. But the, like I said a while back on our, I think it was our eight-year anniversary back in February, I said, as, as long as we're able, we'll always do like an episode, even if it's every six months. <laughs> just because <laughs> we're friends. I, I assume we will be friends till our dying day in some capacity, know, even man. if we even if we're living across the country or if we're down the street from each other, as long as we're breathing and, and able, we will record an episode when we can. So yeah, shame you aren't free man. this weekend. I might be, I just got to figure out my schedule. I think, okay. I think it's, I'll, I'll let you know. We'll figure something out. I got a whole Saturday free. I'm going to go get some breakfast and take yams on a walk. It's going to be fun. Dude, that sounds awesome. Yeah. You should go to buttermilk kitchen Saturday morning. By myself. I don't know about that. Yeah, you go with me. Oh, if you're free, yeah. You see those chicken and waffles I posted earlier? I did, actually. Dude, they are they are kings of breakfast over there, dude. They are not effing around with anything. Yeah, I watched that whole video. I wasn't going to skip it. Yeah. I, uh, I There are many br- breakfast places I love in Atlanta, but Buttermilk Kitchen laughs in the face of all of them, dude. They are unbelievable how good their food is. Right, anyway. You get a reservation. 
we're gonna go. Well, if we show up when they open Saturday morning and Sunday morning is like prime time for them. But if we get there when they're opening, we can just grab a coffee. They let you order like at the bar while you're waiting. If we have to wait like okay. 30 minutes, it's no big deal. Yeah. So good conversation and a lovely spring Saturday morning, Jacob. Coffee in hand. Oh my god. God bless God bless this nation, dude. Oh god bless America. God. god bless you. God bless video games. <laughs> <laughs> what a speech. <laughs> yeah. That is my the, political ad. I'm going to quote uh, you on that. My candidacy when I turn. You got to be 36 or 34 to run for president. I have no clue. Isn't that crazy, dude? In like six years, we could run for president if we wanted oh my to. God, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, dude, let's, let's be running mates. <laughs> we'll run on uh, great video games <laughs> for as all. As a principle. Yeah, great <laughs> video games for all. No matter your affiliation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we could come up with some funny stuff to run on. <laughs> All the principles we stand for in gaming. Yeah. We, we could have a good campaign. I have faith in us. Totally. I'll never forget, uh, I don't want to give their names, but the, the gentleman in our high school class that ran for class president and won over the most popular girl in our class. It will never be yeah. not amazing to me. That is it, legendary. It, it was the class clown versus the most popular girl in school. Yeah, and he, he won. <laughs> yeah, dude. Incredible, dude. I'll never forget that. Like, she was actually it. devastated. She could not believe I it. I know. <laughs> and then he didn't do a damn thing, like any of his duties. <laughs> dude, I, I bet, like, I, mean, I guess in, in high school, that's always kind of been a possibility. But, um, yeah, that was uh, unforgettable. I think we've already so. – did we have a reunion? <laughs> I don't think we did. I suppose we, our tenure reunion was two years ago, and I didn't right. I have no idea what happened with it. I, I'll never go to a high school reunion as long as I live. I didn't hear about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care at all. So <laughs> I probably wouldn't have gone anyway. That's the thing. It's like they're more pointless than ever because of social media. So yeah, you can just just like E3 is pointless because we have digital showcases. Everything's digital now. Yep. We don't. That's why you and I never see each other, Jacob. We're looking at each other over a screen right now. That's all we ever do. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> it doesn't I, have I to be I work on a computer. Way. I game on a computer. I watch shows on my computer. Dude, I hate being on my computer, dude. Hate what? it. I love. I can't computer. stand it, dude. So I, I would rather. I'm, I'm thinking mostly of work, dude. But I'd rather be out in the freezing ice cold or the blazing heat, dying of heat exhaustion with a camera in my hands and being on my computer for more than 30 minutes a day. I cannot stand it, <laughs> which is ironic because I edit, I edit so much, yeah. but, uh, I shoot a lot too, but editing is a big part of the job. And like I, I did my, uh, and I'm, I'm really disheartened right now if I'm being honest, because my videos for COG used to perform very well, but the last few I've done have just like been duds oh, and I pour like my soul into my content for them. Cause I want, I always treat everything I do for COG and really any video I do, like it's the last thing I'm ever going to do. Like if I were to die tomorrow, like that's the video I'd be known for making. Yeah. And uh, I like really work super hard on my Star Wars review. And it's got it's got like 200 views, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> which is so bad. I'll watch I'm it. Like, it's, it's like it's less about me. It's like I really want to do good work for COG because I COG is like been so kind to me and like given me so many wonderful opportunities to really experience the game industry from like someone who works in it. Like I've truly like had the full experience of the games industry over the last uh six years seven years since 2017 and uh, so everything i do for them i, I want to like out of like respect for the opportunity and like respect of like pr and developers that like worked years on these video games like i want it to, to be done well and that's uh, just disheartening when like no one sees it yeah i get that. so is what it is i guess but uh that's the thing. At the end of the day, Jacob, I've never been disheartened about the clicks. I'm more, it's like, I know I did everything I could to make that as good as I possibly could. And like, that's what matters to me most. Yeah. So as long as you remember that. Yeah. I'm, I'm satisfied because of that. So that being, that's why we keep doing it's obvious gaming, dude. Like, obviously like we were growing for a while, we stagnated and now we're at a point where we just exist. And I'm so glad we have folks still tuning in and hanging out on discord. But, uh, it's never really been about like the growth side to me, although that would have been awesome. Uh, like I still just love doing this with my friends and like anyone who's down to hang and tune in. We love you and we appreciate you. So yes, we do. I think on that note, Jacob, that's, that's been 280. Yep. Happy 280. Yeah. Love you to bits, Jacob. And uh, hopefully I'll see you this weekend. Yep. Good night. I got to get to bed and get to work back on the ground. Peace. See you, man.